Yeah, how about you know, Shabbat Rakhita. Quick lunch break lesson, words of wisdom. And I'm gonna go ahead and today I'm gonna be reading out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter five. I'm gonna go ahead and start at verse one. And it reads, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of Yahweh and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. So don't be so, don't be so fast to speak in the presence of the Lord because every idle word thou shalt give account thereof in the day of judgment be not rash with thy mouth and let thine let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God for Yahweh is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few for a dream cometh through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words when thou vowest a vow unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. So don't be pretty much, like I said, man, you're going to be condemned by your words. So don't just, don't, don't be so quick to speak. Don't make bets and promises that you're not going to be able to keep. Yahweh Shai knows that we're not perfect, but uh, like I said, like it says right here, and this is Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse five. It's better, better is it that thou should not vow, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Verse six: Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God Yahweh be angry? at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands for in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also diverse vanities but fear thou god if thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province marvel not at the matter for he that is higher than the highest regardeth and there be higher than they so the lord he controlling everything man once again, Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given unto the hands of the wicked. Verse 9, moreover, the prophet of the earth is for all the king himself. The prophet of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. So I'm saying chasing money, man. That spirit that's on the earth. Everybody out here chasing, chasing a bag, so called. It's, it's all vanity, man. It says that if you love silver, you'll not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is all vanity. When when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Let's pretty much say that that's that's uh, it's an old saying. People always say, they say, more money, more problems. That's pretty much what it's is saying, man. The more money you make, the more the more uh, your cost is going to go up. So that's why, you know what I'm saying, uh, that the true wealth, the true riches is, is this word right here. I know a scripture off the top of my head, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Happy is a man that finds wisdom, and a man that gets to understanding. For the merchandise of her is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof of fine gold. You see that? So the merchandise of her is better than silver, and the gain thereof of fine gold. For she is far more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Okay, so this is the true wealth right here. This is this is what's gonna be the stability of thy times, because riches profit not in the day of wrath. But let's, let's keep on reading though. <clears throat> so it says, uh, we, start, we stopped at 11, I think. I'm going to read it again. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof? Saving the beholding of them with their eyes. Verse 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Verse 15. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun. Namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But though, so but I'm not being greedy, man. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return.
just lock you. Man, so just a quick lunch break lesson, man. I figured, well, you know, I'm reading this this blessed word. I might as well just go ahead and make a quick video, man. Maybe maybe somebody ain't read this chapter. So it's a lock you for all the noise in the background. Once again, it's a quick lunch break lesson, man. Let's, let's keep reading. So uh, let's see, verse 14. But those riches perished by evil travail, and he begat a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb naked, shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. Because all this is going to be dissolved, man. This, this carnal, this flesh, man, we can't take this into the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Ho hopefully we part of that, hopefully that, we part of that number. We receive new bodies. You know, we lifted into the chariots in the blink of an eye. You see, that's what we, that's what we fighting for. That's what we hoping for. But whether whether it's the case or not, man, you can everything here is gonna be burnt to a crisp, man. We we can't take none of this stuff with us. It's not gonna profit. Naked as we came, naked she will return. Verse 16. And this also is a sore evil that at all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labor for the wind? Right? Because like I said, it's how the, you got to think about it. Uh, the scriptures say the Lord is going to come as a whirlwind. He's going to destroy everything as a whirlwind. So what profit? Let's, let's get that again. What profit hath he that hath labor for the wind? Because it's all going to be destroyed anyways. All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. Because once again, man, you know what I'm saying? If you... If you're not in his truth, then you're in the dark. You're in the darkness, man. So you're going to have much sorrow. All right? Verse 18. Behold, it means to look, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which Yahweh giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom Yahweh hath given riches and wealth and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. But he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God and answereth him in the joy of his heart. And that's it, man. That's it for this chapter. Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh. Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bashim Rakakwadash. Peace, blessings, safety to all you sincere. I can keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless whether we're here or forbear. Shalom.